There we go. Okay, so welcome to our second uh, Ontario Open Library Network community webinar, uh, webinar on getting ready for Open Education Week. Uh, we host these webinars the second Tuesday of every month at noon, uh, or we hope to. Um, and this is our, our second one, and it is the second Tuesday of the month. Um, so we have two really wonderful panelists today with us. Um, I'd just like to take a moment to introduce them. First of all, we have Ali Versluis, uh, who is the Open Educational Resources Librarian at the University of Guelph. And we also have Marani Seal, who is the Manager of the Library and Learning Commons at Cambrian College. Um, we have, I've, I'm so excited to be able to introduce uh, both of these speakers because they both did very interesting and exciting events last year for, for Open Education Week, and I'm really looking forward to hearing what they had to say about how those events went, the process, uh, what kind of events worked. Um, and so this is your opportunity to chat with them each and, and um, hear from them, and then we'll open the floor after their presentations to general um, Q&A about their presentations, but also if you have questions, comments, ideas for Open Education Week, feel free to drop those in the chat as well. Um, so without further ado, I don't know which one of you wants to go first, but whoever unmutes their microphone first uh, can, can go. And now neither of us unmute our microphones. <laughs> All right, Allie. <laughs> okay, so uh, this is my first time uh, presenting on Zoom. So, oh, Lillian, I can't share my screen. Oh, there we go, okay. There you go. Um, can everyone see my screen okay? Everyone can see your screen. Okay, awesome. Yes, still see it? Or is it now, is it in presenter view? It's in presenter view, Allie. Ugh, the struggle is real. Okay. <laughs> I am just going to, sorry, friend. Oh, take your time. Now you can see how embarrassing I am with uh, PowerPoint here. <laughs> uh, no presenter view. Okay. This should be good. Now it's, I also have like a multi-screen situation, so that's part of it. Can you, is it still in the PowerPoint view? Yes, yeah, Allie. Okay. Mm. Okay, it's fine. I'll just, I don't want to waste time, so I will just keep it in this awkward PowerPoint uh, situation here. Sorry, friends. Mm. Okay, so. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Um, so, as Lillian mentioned, Ali Versace. I'm an Open Educational Resources Librarian here at the University of Guelph. Um, so before I get started, I really just wanted to give a, a bit of an overview about the context at U of G, um, just because I don't know who is on the call and what folks kind of familiarity is um, with my institution. Um, so I'm always a little weary about kind of best practices thing. So I was really glad that the folks at eCampus framed this as more of a getting kind of started because I think so much of what you're able to accomplish in um, these types of weeks or standalone events is really dependent on what your institution kind of looks like and um, and things like that. So I just wanted to note the context that I'm coming from uh, since so much of that shapes my privilege and my positionality and the things that I've been able to do as well. So my position is a new one. Um, I've been seconded into this role from a different role um, and it is currently envisioned as a two-year appointment. So the nice thing about that is I've been really able to focus on kind of all things OER, um, which might not have been possible um, if this was just one of the many kind of hats that I was wearing. So um, in terms of kind of U of G's context, um, we're a mid-sized institution, so about 25,000 students, mostly undergraduate student students. Um, we're a research-intensive institution, um, but we really also place a high emphasis on teaching. Um, so in our mission and values, we place the learner at the center of all that we do. So we have a strong campus spirit with a fair amount of student activists, um, but a large um, truancy problems so we have a lot of students who like skip classes um so it's it's actually really challenging to get people to like show up and tune in and pay attention so um 
we've had an institutional task force here at U of G, the Open and Affordable Course Content Task Force, since January of 2017. Um, but we have done a lot of open advocacy in the past, mostly around um, open access. We've had a couple of colloquiums, you know, workshops, events. We're really supported and encouraged by our administration. So. Um, with all that said, I'm going to do a bit of a lightning round of some of the events that we've done. Um, this isn't meant to be exhaustive, but and hopefully folks get a chance to ask more about them um, in the Q&A. Um, but just to give you a bit of an overview of some of the things that we focused on. Okay, so, um, so we'll start with Open Access Week 2017. Um, so this is kind of where our open education initiatives kind of started. Um, so we um, organized an OER sprint. Um, I did this in uh, collaboration with my colleague Claire, who works in open learning and educational support. So this was a full day event sponsored by eCampus Ontario. Um, and uh, attendees were mostly librarians and instructional designers coming from Ottawa to Windsor. Um, and our kind of a directive was really to focus on creating promotional events um, for advocacy efforts. Um, so this was a really fantastic event and some of the, um, the outputs of this event I'll be talking a little bit about later. And some of you may be using some of the outputs of this event in your own advocacy because eCampus was able to kind of take those and improve them. Um, but I think part of the reason that we were successful in this was being really intentional about putting kind of an appropriate amount of boundaries around the day. So sprints are really great. It's a really rich opportunity to do some cool intensive work. Um, but we were really intentional about saying like, these are the types of objects we wanted to create. This is the type of content we're looking for. And also having a lot of structure around kind of how groups would be formed, um, which helped to minimize folks who were maybe feeling kind of rudderless or burning out. Sprints are really intense. Um, and if there's not a direction given, people can kind of get disengaged and it's really challenging to keep that momentum um, going. So um, if you're thinking about a sprint, they're really awesome, but um, the thing to keep in mind too is that it's really important to keep that dialogue closed after the day of, especially since it's unlikely that you will finish all of your very lofty goals after that first day. Um, we also did a tabling event and a postcard campaign. So this was tied to Open Access Week, but we really focused on um, open education as part of that. So lots of tabling events in the past had been done in the library. We have this really nice space on the first floor that's really central, kind of when you come in. Um, and that was great and useful, but we were really interested in kind of getting um, more visible traction on that. So we wanted to go to um, the university center, so somewhere that was more kind of visible where we'd get more students, including students who tended not to be library users. Um, so that was just one of the many uh, activities that we ha had planned for Open Access Week that year. Um, it was a really, I would say a really challenging event. You don't think of tabling as a really challenging thing, but I think there were some things that maybe didn't go as we had hoped they would. Um, the um, space was really challenging. So even though it was a really high traffic space, um, it's also the space where like club days happen, events, poster sales, a whole ton of things that are going on, um, which is awesome. But it also means that students are overwhelmed with people trying to talk to them literally all of the time. So sometimes being able to start those conversations effectively, like students would just like avoid eye contact with you. <laughs> so it's kind of awkward. Um, some of the folks who were taking turns at the tabling station also felt really uncomfortable about kind of starting those conversations and engaging in that cold call, um, which was um, something that we hadn't really taken into account either. Um, I think people volunteer for those slots and don't necessarily think, okay, well, what happens if no one is making eye contact with me? Or how do I continue to start those conversations in kind of an organic way as people are just walking by? Um, so wasn't a great event but was helpful i think in terms of kind of starting an open awareness with some of our undergraduate students um which has been great because um up until that point a lot of our kind of open advocacy had really been focusing on graduate students and faculty members uh so when a lot of those previous activities laid the groundwork for open education week 2019 um, so this was the first year that we had planned anything for Open Education Week specifically. So again, up until this point, we had been tagging things onto OA Week or not even really acknowledging Open Education Week at all, which is totally fine if you don't have the resources. Um, 
but uh, OE week 2019 was the first year that my secondment had existed. So we were able to do a lot more because I had a lot more time to do a lot of that heavy lifting around event planning um, and making things, making sure, you know, uh, uh, everything was going according to plan. Um, but I did have a lot of support from the open and affordable course content task force members as well. So they helped really plan all of the events and I took the lead on kind of making um, all of the logistical stuff happening. So booking the rooms and liaising with our communications team to do promotions and things like that. Um, so we started things off with a faculty forum on Monday. So this was kind of our kickoff event in our academic town square, which is this really open visible space in the library. It's on the first floor. Um, we, I later learned that the reason we don't tend to have events in that space is because it's really challenging because we have to get unlike all of our other rooms in the library, um, that space, because it's this open space, um, it's not hooked up with microphones or any tech or AV, so we had to go and get that dealt with externally, which we also had to pay for. Um, so that was a bit of a, a challenging hurdle, um, but the nice thing about it was, because it was in this really open, visible space, is that even people who weren't attending the event we're kind of walking by and noticing it would maybe even some students would come and kind of sit down for 10 minutes just listen and get up and walk away um so i don't know if that was an indictment on the programming or just they had somewhere else to be um but i do think that it was great in terms of lending some um, visibility to those events that wouldn't have happened if we just had it in a meeting room uh, so the kickoff event uh, consisted of a keynote. So we had Dr. Gil Green, who is from Okanagan College, talk a lot about his work in OER and open pedagogy, um, get people kind of fired up and talking about why that work is important. Um, and then we had an update from the Open and Affordable Course Content Task Force. So what we had been working on over the last couple of years, what some of our priorities and projects were. Uh, and then we had a student faculty panel. So this was an opportunity to showcase some of the work that had been happening at U of G um, specifically and folks were encouraged to kind of reflect on, you know, opportunities, barriers, what was going well, what was still a challenge, um, which was really fantastic. The whole thing was awesome and we did get a a lot of great feedback from the folks who did attend it. It was super worthwhile in terms of training, building, up, building up their familiarity with open and getting more aware of what was happening on campus, both in terms of the task force, but also like faculty activities. Um, but, and despite like we had done a ton of promotion, sent out some personal invites to folks, um, amped up our communications and marketing, um, we only had a few faculty and students come. We had a lot of library staff, which also tends to happen a lot with open, open related activities, um, which was great. But the, the faculty and the students that had come were people who were on the panel. So uh, um, that was a bit challenging, but we did have probably between 35 and 40 folks come throughout the course of the morning. Um, so pretty good, I guess, for um, in terms of thinking about the numbers of some of our open events. Um, but it was really challenging because we did spend money in bringing in a keynote speaker and there was lots of logistics that I had to to deal with um, in terms of like booking accommodations and uh, things like that um, that has since kind of made us rethink some of our default assumptions around keynotes and kind of these more like splashy uh, showcase events so it was also valuable in getting us to kind of think about locally is this something that we should be doing every year what should it look like things like that um, we did a, another tabling event and a, another postcard campaign. Um, so the task force was really explicit about having a student focused event. Um, our previous events, which had been again tagged onto Open Access Week, focused really on kind of like general, like raw, raw activities. This is why Open is awesome. Here's why you should care. This is what it helps you achieve. Or it had been really focused on money. So this is how much textbooks cost. Isn't this a problem? If you didn't spend this money on textbooks, what would you have been able to purchase instead? Um, and that's really great and valuable, but we also wanted to shift our narrative array away from just focusing on money to also talking about some of the other benefits of open education. Um, this also allowed us to simplify our message because we we're only focusing on OER and we weren't focusing on um, open more generally. 
it made sure that everyone who was working the table um, was super familiar with open so they could really reiterate um, kind of main points around not only price but also the flexibility of course materials and improved outcomes um, and one of the other things too that had happened with some of our postcard uh, events is that we were gathering really interesting data but students didn't necessarily understand what we were doing with that data um, we wanted to make sure that the postcards were actually going somewhere so we decided to send them to the dean of each college so when students came by the table they would tell us their program after they had filled out the postcard um, and then we would find a sticker with their dean's um, mailing address on it and then they would drop it in the box so then we would go through and collect up postcards from each of our colleges um, and, and deliver them to the respective deans. So we really hope to paint a picture of what things look like across the campus and in particular colleges. Um, and we were hoping that students would get why we were asking this and be more kind of vulnerable and explicit about how this was affecting them. Um, so we were super optimistic. We printed about a thousand cards which we only ended up using about 350 of them which is still fantastic we were able to have um, really great conversations um, in-depth conversations with students because they felt like they could really understand um, and wrap their head around open which was super awesome the food also probably helped uh, this is what the postcard looks like so it's a bit of a modified version of the eCampus Ontario postcard um, we changed up some of the wording on the front to things that we felt more strongly about and then in the back we just put information about our own local partners and put like a fun little Griffin stamp on the top here and directed folks to our local um, website that talks about OER as well. Um, here are some examples of some of these I won't go over them I'm happy to share access to the slides after the fact but folks talking about a lot of different things in terms of social justice um, the great things about OER being able to be modified for the classroom all sorts of good stuff. Also did a couple of workshops. So we had an introduction to OER workshop and a finding OER for your course workshop. Um, I delivered both of those workshops. Um, so uh, the first one we had mostly library folks come. Um, again, sensing a theme here. Uh, and then the second one we had a, a mixture of students and faculty. So um, this was really cool. Even though we had a lot of library staff, we had a lot of kind of um, library associates, MLIS co-op students, so not folks who tend to come out to open events, so that was really awesome to get them more aware of OER. Um, but one of the things that I did learn about this is um, how I pitched finding OER for your course. Um, I assumed that it would be obvious that that was directed to faculty and I tried to get at that in the description, but we did have some students who came and were like, yes, I am interested in finding open resources for my course. Um, so that was really um, valuable in its own way, but gave me some things to think about in terms of kind of framing for the future. Um, we also did a design thinking workshop on the Thursday. This was our most intensive event. It was um, a half day event, so for four hours. Um, it was invite only, so faculty, librarians, instructional designers, staff, all sorts of folks participated. Um, and it was modeled after an open con workshop that I had delivered in 2018. Um, and the purpose of it was really to generate strategies to advance open on our campus. So by getting folks to really think about their own kind of context and behaviors and values, um, to really think about how we can advance open on this campus um, as well. This was also sponsored by eCampus Ontario. Um, and the outcome of this was that there were a lot of kind of more contextual nuanced understanding of barriers and opportunities for open on our campus, both in terms of the folks that participated but also us as organizers. Uh, we also um, did a little bit for Open Access Week this year. Um, so we decided to kind of shift the focus away from open branding on every level and really focused on um, uh, course material horror story. So it happened in the lead up to Halloween and everyone liked Halloween. It's kind of fun. We thought we could get some candy um, and frame it a little bit differently. So um, so this happened during open access week was staffed by again task force members um, And really we were interested in hearing uh, from students any horror stories they had about their course materials So keeping with the spooky theme um, But shifting that narrative to focus less explicitly on open and more about kind of course materials in general because we recognize that part of doing advocacy around open is also having an understanding of 
all of the other kind of course material ecosystem parts. So, you know, um, engagement software and uh, these other tools that are getting used in the classroom is important as well for that that advocacy conversation, especially if we want to have conversations about access, agency, privacy, data collection, all of that stuff as well. So that's a little bit about what it looks like. We had some instructions about why we were doing this, because one of the things that came up consistently when we were doing tabling events, if we left the materials there and there was no one to kind of explain it, or if we had a lot of students at the table, um, this kind of helped us to triage and get people to kind of understand why we were doing this. Uh, in terms of lessons learned, um, there's a couple things I wanted to emphasize that I think are just generally good practice for like any event planning, but especially for these um, really resource intensive weeks where you might have a lot of different things going on. So invite other folks in, you don't have to do it yourself. Um, for Open Access Week 2017, we did this distributed leadership model where everyone on the committee took the lead on an, on an event and everyone was a supporter of an event. So that gave people an opportunity to feel empowered in terms of kind of um, structuring what that event looked like, developing some leadership skills. And we had some students on the committee as well. So that was really awesome um, for them. Thinking about having students lead initiatives or be visible leaders on the day of helps you to connect with students more organically so you can frame things in a way that resonates and makes sense with students. Um, don't reinvent the wheel. So look around for materials that you already have access to through eCampus Ontario, other listservs. Um, likewise goes for planning things like workshops. Um, you can always schedule workshops that you've already taught during Open Education Week to give kind of a boost um, to some of those workshops, but use things that you've already prepped. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, reconsider big showcases and external keynotes. Um, it's a lot of work. And in my experience, I don't always feel like the turnout justifies all of that work. Um, you can also get um, internal folks to come and showcase their work. Um, it's a good way to um, give attention to the good, the good work that is already happening on your campus can feel a bit more manageable than having a keynote come in who's like doing all the things. Um, so befriend the important people. So get insights into who um, is running kind of communications, who you need to befriend to figure out like catering and room bookings. And lots of times admin assistants and communications and marketing folks are really helpful for that. So befriend those people for sure. Um, try not to get hung up on how many people come. So conversations are more important than numbers. Um, this work is cultural and behavioral work, um, and that takes a lot of time. Um, but students are the best persuaders, and faculty are the best persuaders for other faculty. Um, so even if you get only a few people kind of on your side and on the open side, those people can be huge advocates for you going forward. Um, use your network, so look for folks um, who might be interested in this work that you may not know of, so ask your colleagues who might be interested, um, reach out to people and offer a personalized um, invitation that can go um, a long way as well. And know yourself, so if the event requires you to do a thing that doesn't feel genuine, so like starting a cold call conversation from nowhere, um, find someone that is comfortable with doing that, so students or um, library science students um, can maybe feel a little bit more comfortable doing that work, um, or just forego something like that altogether. Um, otherwise, you will be uncomfortable and it will feel like a waste of time. That's it. Okay, thanks so much, Allie. Um, so there are a couple questions popping up in the, in the Q&A. Um, if you have a question and you put it in the chat, if you could drop it in the Q&A, that would be fabulous so that we can um, not lose track of it as we move forward. And we'll, we'll do all of the Q&A at the end. But Ali, you can feel free to type an answer to anything that was asked uh, directly of you in the, in the chat. Uh, and we'll move on next to um, Marnie and uh, love to hear what happened last year at, at Cambrian. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks so much. Um, I'm just going to try to see if I can screen share here. Uh, okay, there we go. Can you see my, my open ed week uh, slide here? 
Yes, we can. <laughs> okay, awesome. <laughs> uh, okay, so hi everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Marnie Seal. I'm the uh, the manager of the Library and Learning Commons here at Cambrian. Um, I'm fairly new in 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 the management role. I was previously uh, the faculty librarian here. Um, things things changed recently and, and got shifted around. So um, so just wanted to note that. Um, yeah, and, and just to give a bit of context about uh, about Cambrian, um, we are uh, we are a small college. Uh, I think we're I think we're the biggest of the small colleges in uh, in Ontario. Um, we're, we have around five thousand students this year, um, and we have a lot of uh, you know a lot of trades programs, but also our, our health sciences programs and business programs are very popular. Uh, and we do have a lot of, uh, you know, technology and arts uh, programs as well. So a, a diverse range of, uh, of, of programming going on. Um, and what kind of led into our, um, our, our interest in, in open was, um, you know, we, we kind of got started in this because <clears throat> we, we had seen that there was a lot of concern around, around uh, what was happening with textbooks and the demand for textbooks, especially in the library. We saw that you know, course text reserves were becoming increasingly, um, increasingly popular. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, I'm recovering from a cold, so, so I hope you can bear with me <laughs> for my, my voice here. Um, so, so we had seen that, that this was going on and that the, the textbook piece was challenging for students. Um, and, and we had a couple of, uh, of other faculty members get involved with, with eCampus through their OE Fellows program. Uh, so Laura Killam and, and Jessica O'Reilly got involved with that program uh, and that really kind of got us rolling with with open ed on campus um, and currently this year uh, I'm just uh, finishing up my term as the in the second cohort of the OE fellows program so we've been very fortunate to have uh, have three people from Cambrian take part in that program and it's been really uh, beneficial for us to to keep this this good movement that we've gotten here uh, at Cambrian rolling um, so, I, and I did just want to uh, preface this whole thing by saying, um, if there's one thing that I've learned about open ed, it is definitely that it is a team sport. Um, so all of the planning for this event uh, and any open events that we've had definitely could not have happened uh, without working with a team. So definitely um, re reflecting back on what Ali said about, you know, kind of knowing who, who to reach out to, that's absolutely, uh, absolutely important, knowing who the, you know, your communications people, that sort of thing. Um, but also for, for us here, um, working, having the library work with the teaching and learning hub was abs absolutely key. Um, they were really big drivers of, uh, of this initiative for us. We have a, a brand new teaching and learning hub. It, it opened in 2018 and, and, uh, and so that was really exciting for us. So, um, I have to, I have to say that things kind of got started for us. Initially, when we decided to uh, to host an open day in May 2018, shortly after we we opened our teaching and learning uh, hub, so we we did present on this at the eCampus uh, test conference back in in 2018. So I do have a link to our our uh, document there. I'll share that in the chat. Um, all about planning an open day, and I included that because we we planned quite a few events for our open day event that could easily be be used for for Open Ed Week. Uh, a lot of really good ideas in there, and we decided to to hold that uh, that initial open day event to kind of start to get people familiar with with open and and what it is. Um, and we had some really exciting things planned for that. So um, I have the the kind of layout of things here, where um, you know we we started we we kicked off that week with a film screening. Uh, we screened uh, the Internet's Own Boy. We had, we had two different screenings, kind of the the day before we our open day event, uh, and then for o open day itself, we ran several uh, several sessions um, just to kind of get people familiar. We started with like kind of an all stakeholder session to to give a give an introduction to it. Uh, we had two program managers from eCampus uh, here with us in Sudbury. Um, taking us through that. Uh, we had our, our OE fellows at the time, Jess and Laura, um, giving a, an introduction to the, to the OE movement, uh, talking about various pieces there. And then from the library perspective, um, we, we held, uh, we kind of did like a where to find OER event as well. Uh, and we followed that up the next day on the Friday with, a, with an OER grab event where 
um, you know, kind of faculty, now, now that you've seen this, now that we've been talking about this, you come, uh, come hang out with us and we'll, we'll search and, and try to curate some material for you. Um, so that was a really cool kind of follow up to the big open day. Um, a couple of other things we did for open day, we had kind of an introduction to press books. Uh, we were also very fortunate to get uh, Cable Green from uh, Creative Commons to do a, a quick intro on, you know, what is uh, Creative Commons licensing? How does open licensing work? So that was really cool. Um, so a lot of really, really neat ideas that we incorporated there that could definitely play into a, an open week event. Um, and like I said, I have some links throughout my, my presentation here and I'll, I'll share those in the chat after um, just so that everybody has, has our, our planning material there. So then we wanted to kind of keep the momentum going. So leading into uh, Open Ed Week 2019, again, we were, we were fortunate to get some support funding from eCampus Ontario that helped us with, uh, with food and door prizes to help uh, attract people uh, into everything. And we had, uh, we had some really cool events going on that week as well. So uh, again, from the library perspective, we, we ran a, an open book fair. The idea was to kind of have like a, a scholastic book fair kind of feel to it and, uh, and, and have a, a display set up with actual physical printed open textbooks so that people could kind of wander through and, and flip through them and have a look. Um, and and that, that really uh, was really valuable because um, having that physical resource for faculty to, to take a look at and, and see the quality of these open textbooks um, it, it was really beneficial and it generated a lot of conversations with, with the faculty members who were looking at this stuff um, and, and really caught their interest. So that was great. Um, and the other component of that that we had going on was that we had these little uh, sign out sheets for them so that they could like, like you know, like the scholastic order form type of, uh, type of look to them so that they could, they could check which ones they wanted to see after the event. Um, so the week after open week, I went around and delivered copies of the open textbooks to faculty members so that they could borrow them from us for a little while and, and, uh, and have a look through them. So that was, a, that was really cool. That was a really, uh, really popular piece of our OE week, OE week planning that we, uh, that we ran. Um, we also ran, a, uh, we did another movie screening uh, similar to our open day, but this time we partnered with the local uh, indie cinema co-op to, to run it. Um, so this time we ran uh, Paywall, the business of scholarship um, uh, in a local screening in the evening one night. And we invited um, folks from other local post-secondary institutions to join us. We have another, another college and a, and a university here in Sudbury. So we invited a few of them to to come by with us to, to do that. Um, so that was a, a cool idea as well. Um, and then we also kind of went out on tour. We did, a, Amy Cliff and I, we did a staff tutor breakfast. We had folks from the Learning Center come in uh, to kind of give them an introduction to this uh, because they, they hadn't, really, um, hadn't really caught so much of the open day previously uh, the year before. So, so this was uh, kind of how to pull them in and, and show off how, um, you know, open resources could support them or they, they could use open resources in supporting students through their tutoring activities. Um, so we did talk a little bit there about, you know, what is open education, uh, what are open, you know, what are open materials, uh, open licensing, and uh, a big piece that we showed them was the, uh, the College Libraries Ontario Teaching and Learning Portal site, um, where we host a lot of, a lot of uh, material that we're, that we're sharing openly. Um, like uh, the the provincial like college libraries provincially are are contributing to that site, so we were showing them that as well because that site has some hubs um, around uh, some hubs for students that are particularly that could be particularly helpful for for tutors. Uh, so things like you know um, study strategies, how to do research, um, uh, how to uh, how you know write writing an essay, how to how to cite things. And we have all those components on that site, so we shared that with them so that they could look at potentially adopting and adapting some of that material um, in their tutoring practice. So they were they were very interested in that. Um, the uh, the chair of teaching and learning, Jenny Heyman, she also uh, went to our academic advisory council to give a presentation. Um, I believe we also passed around some some copies of the open text open textbooks at that event as well so that people could flip through and have a look at them and again just just uh, just get them um, oriented to the idea of open 
Um, and then again, Amy Cliff and I also met with the uh, the academic advisors again with like a I think we had a a little breakfast type of event with them again to show them talk to them about you know what is open, uh, where can they find that stuff, uh, show them the uh, the learning portal website, see if there's anything there that they could use. Um, so they they were really appreciative of that as well um, to see how they could implement some of some of those tools that 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 live in the open in their uh, advising practice. Um, so I just wanted to show off here, if you can see our, our planning document, um, a key piece to all of this has been ha having a really good collaborative planning document. Uh, and I have to give a shout out to, uh, to Jess O'Reilly and Sarah Wendorf. They're the, the masters of these, <laughs> these planning documents. Um, so that's kind of how we've been organizing ourselves for all of these things. Um, so just kind of having a shared Google Doc saying, okay, what is the, you know, what's the thing that we're doing? Who's taking care of it? What's going to happen? You know, where what's the status? Where are we at? Um, that that really helped us to be organized for these events and keep track of what was going on. Um, part of that as well was putting things in our our hub calendar. So that's our, our teaching and learning innovation hub has a has a calendar on their website um, that allows people to sign up for events. Uh, I believe a lot of this also went out in their newsletter, and it also went out on the college wide uh, weekly news email. Uh, it, it went out there as well. Um, oh yeah, and another thing that they, that we were doing in the Teaching and Learning Hub was we were streaming, we were running a live stream of the other webinars that were going on for Open Ed Week in the classroom space that we have there, so people could kind of drop in to, uh, to watch some of those webinars if they wanted to, to hang out in the classroom together and, and check that out. Um, so that, that, was, that was going on as well, so that was really cool. So we did have multiple kind of uh, touch points for promoting uh, this event. Um, I believe we put it in our library newsletter as well. So there was a library newsletter, the hub newsletter, the, the all campus uh, email, the hub calendar. Um, and I think we also created like invitation cards and sent those out. Uh, so that was really, um, what we really did, did try to do a lot of promoting there. So it, it went really well. Um, other things that went well, definitely the book fair. Uh, like I said, faculty were really drawn to that display. Um, and, and afterwards, um, if, if there wasn't something on the, on the display that fell into a particular instructor's uh, subject area, uh, I found there was definitely a big uptick in people contacting me to try to help them find something that, that was in their subject area. So uh, a lot of requests started coming in afterwards uh, for curation assistance, just based on, on having that display. Um, so that was really good. Another another piece of what we did there, I think that that contributed to to building conversations was that um, we we were running a draw, I believe, for like a door prize, and and faculty had to fill out a little a little ticket for the door prize, uh, saying you know what what interested them about OE, um, and, and put it in the in the bucket for the door prize before they could uh, <laughs> before they could leave. <laughs> so so that that helped to kind of build some interest there as well, and, and got us some feedback. Um, which was really interesting and also kind of uh, nicely forced people to have a conversation with us too about about you know what are they interested in or what are they looking for um, so that was that was really fun um, we also saw after we kind of made the rounds with the academic advisors and the tutors um, that we had a lot of a lot more traffic to our uh, our library copyright and OER guide, uh, which was part of what I was showing them, and then and then also uh, traffic coming into the learning portal from Sudbury increased big time, uh, which I think, uh, I mean I I'm guessing because I, I don't have uh, concrete data to back this up, but I'm guessing it had to do in large part with our our outreach efforts there and showing people that learning portal site uh, to get them using it. So a lot of increased interest there. Um, and I just have a photo of our of our display, uh, some of the books that we ordered for this, and and the libraries cataloged all of these open textbooks, and we but we housed them in a in a uh, a bookshelf area down in our teaching and learning hub, so that people can can see them when they're down there. Um, but they're cataloged through us, so that people can check them out and we can keep track of them. Um, part of what we found, I believe it was OE Week uh, twenty seventeen. It would have been. Um, was that I think it was I think it was then that eCampus sent us some open textbooks to to uh, have a look at for the week 
and we had put them out on a display in the, inside the library saying, hey, take a look at these open textbooks. And the students interpreted open to mean free and started stealing copies of the textbooks. So, so, maybe, so uh, we felt that this display thing really worked better uh, in, in more of a, a, an enclosed area where, um, where it was mostly just instructors or staff coming through. Um, and where we, we had very clear prompts there for, uh, you know, you can, you can borrow these books, uh, here's how to sign them out. Uh, that, that definitely worked better. Um, that was our display. And then accompanying the display, we, had, uh, we, we also had a slideshow going to show, uh, you know, some of the other uh, textbooks that were out there, giving a description of them. And we used the branding that was coming from uh, the OE Week website. Um, and pointing to the open library site where they could access these textbooks. Um, so, so that was just kind of a, a visual, like a scrolling visual to accompany them uh, on the monitor next to the display. Um, that's another one there. We had our, uh, the hub had their, their um, graphic design student work on this for us. So they, they look really, really good. Uh, and it helped to kind of have, have that playing as well, just to get some more, some more interest there. Um, in terms of what didn't work so well, um, and I think I think maybe Trisha had asked about this in the chat, um, was the scheduling. Um, yeah, because the, the, the timing is a very busy time um, in the semester, kind of around near reading week. And then, of course, we also have always the challenge of um, faculty having, having schedules that don't always allow them to attend events. Um, so, so that was definitely a bit of a, a bit of a challenge for us. That's why we thought having kind of some some open events that people could just kind of stroll through in the teaching and learning hub would be helpful because people could just kind of drop in as they were available. Um, but yeah, the, the scheduling was definitely challenging, um, and there also was a bit of a you know <laughs> anything to do with open education. There is a, a bit of a lack of awareness there, um, just the the terminology. Um, Kind of requires some explanation i feel like a lot of the time where you know um people don't nece necessarily know what we mean by open uh so it does make it a bit difficult to uh to kind of brand these events and, and communicate about it we found that a bit challenging as well um so yeah i mean we we, we I, th I think we made a good effort there but it, it it definitely um it takes some some extra thought um and, and another point i took a lot of this uh, a lot of this uh, information out of a, a report that Jenny Heyman had had submitted to eCampus after the fact. One of the comments that, that she had made about what, what didn't work so well was also that, you know, it's in the winter and it's cold and nobody wants to go outside <laughs> when, when these things are going on. So uh, the film screening that we held was a really, was a really cool idea, but it, it was like snowing and cold that night and people didn't want to come out. <laughs> so that also made it, uh, made it challenging. Um, yeah, so something to consider anyway. Um, another thing that I, I didn't put, I didn't put on my presentation here, but that definitely, um, also kind of makes it interesting for us is that, uh, kind of unlike, uh, like in what Ali was speaking about at, at Guelph and their institution where they have some, uh, some structure around what they're doing there. Um, we don't have any, any committees for this. Uh, we don't have any, um, I guess, confirmed support uh, of, of this. It's all just been kind of a grassroots uh, effort on our part to, uh, to get this going. Um, and and it, the feedback has been, has been positive, but it has been, I feel like we have kind of reached a, a point where we are feeling the need to um, kind of formalize some structure around what we're doing a little more. So that, that has been another, uh, another challenge for us. So, you know, institutions, uh, I feel like across the province are kind of at different places with, with all of that uh, on, on how, uh, how their structure is, how formally they're supporting these initiatives. And, and so that can, that can also be a big consideration in, uh, in planning these events. Um, I just have some shots of the, the feedback we received. Um, so again, this, this is from those, those ballots that people had to fill out for the door prize uh, at the book fair. Um, so lots of lots of positive feedback there. People were really excited about it. A lot of these people uh, who were submitting feedback um, hadn't hadn't heard of, of open ed before and open textbooks that sort of thing. So it was very excited for them. Exciting for them. Yeah, increased accessibility. A lot of interest to find materials specific to their courses. Uh, 
and of course I've scared everyone with with copyright training <laughs> so so now that people are very vigilant about about following the rules and they're very excited about uh, about finding openly licensed materials so that's been that's been exciting too to talk about with with faculty as we we move forward um, for next steps um, one of the things that that Jenny had noted in her report was that you know it would be it would be really great to do a, an earlier brainstorm with other folks who are planning open ed week activities so uh, here we are <laughs> we we uh, we asked for it and, and here it is so that that worked out well um, I think just to just to generate some ideas is, is definitely really helpful um, we had talked about the potential for maybe some gamification next time around uh, to build interest in, in the events that we're holding um, definitely more open textbooks like I said that was a really big hit having the actual physical materials there for people to flip through really made it uh, really made it real for them and really um, added value to the conversations so um, I think we will definitely be looking at ordering some more open textbooks for the next round uh, and then adoption tracking um, so we're, we were really good about kind of promote like pushing this out to people but then we haven't been as good at uh, tracking who has actually adopted these things um, or, or who is using them uh, in their in their classes and I, I know Lillian I think you had sent an email a few uh, a couple months ago asking us for some uh, some adoption numbers here um, so I think that's definitely something that we're that we've um, we need to kind of loop back to and see um, you know based on on what we did did anybody adopt uh, open open textbooks? I think anecdotally, anecdotally, we know that some people have, but it would be nice to get some to get some numbers there. Um, yeah, and then just uh, further to that, I mean, uh, kind of again reflecting back on on what Ali said, this is a big culture shift piece, uh, and it can definitely take take some time to to build that. Um, so I guess my my final piece of advice would just to be um, not to get too frustrated about the slow pace of things um it, it can it can take some time but we've uh we've definitely been been building momentum slowly and, and it's exciting so uh yeah just keep on <laughs> keep on uh, moving forward with it is is my advice there um the only other piece that we didn't really include um it was kind of the student outreach piece um and we had kind of hesitated there we weren't quite sure um about how uh, you know if it was good timing uh, to to engage students at that point and there was some um, some hesitation around you know when when we should do that we also found you know that having OE week mid semester was was maybe not the best timing it was very busy um, we you know the student governments were were kind of in flux at the t at the time that we were looking at this so we decided to hold off on that piece um, I think maybe maybe as we go forward, that's definitely another piece we want to we want to consider of how to best engage them and when to best engage them in these things. Um, yeah, I think that that was that's kind of the the other piece that we were missing. So, um, yeah, I think that's I think that's kind of everything I, I had. Um, I hope that's I hope that was helpful. I hope that gave people some ideas. And yeah, I can uh, give the screen back over to you, Lillian, if I can figure out how. <laughs> how to do that let me see there we go <laughs> don't worry I got it um so I just wanted to take just a moment to thank you guys both and encourage folks to continue to put questions into the Q&A um and Ali and Marnie if you want to take a browse through the answered and unanswered questions and if there's anything you'd like to elaborate on uh, allowed. We've got nine whole minutes. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I do want to answer Trisha's question uh, live. Uh, will there be any financial support from eCampus Ontario this year or other support? Uh, unfortunately, the, we, we don't have the capacity to continue to do financial support for um, Open Ed Week events. We had an awesome time last year, but the interest was just so overwhelming uh, and uh, we didn't get it together in time this year. Um, but we do have a lot of resources that you can use. So um, we have three slide decks for workshops that are like have slide notes fully ready to go and they're openly licensed. Uh, so you can find that there's an intro to OER, there's a Creative Commons licensing and there's a Pressbooks 101 training which is available in English and in French. Um, we have infographics, posters and postcards also available. Uh, so those postcards that Ali 
Ali had mentioned, oops, and uh, oops, uh, those, you know, textbooks are food, reasons to use OER, Creative Commons licenses, OER and you, um, all available. And then we've always got the OLN Slack channel for support. Um, I will, uh, I will drop these links in the shared document. Um, but the OLN Slack channel is always open and available to ping for questions or ideas. And you can additionally always email me at open at ecampusontario.ca if you have questions, if you're looking to invite someone to your campus and you, you want to find a connection, um, if you have an idea and you want to see if anyone else has done something similar, we are always happy to, to be that bridge and facilitate those connections. Um, and finally, uh, if you do decide to do events for Open Ed Week, um, please, please, please submit them to the Open Education Consortium's Open Ed Week calendar. I want to see Ontario very robustly represented. Uh, so at openeducationweek.org, you can submit your entry here very easily uh, and that says what kind of events you're running, whether they're open to the public or not. Um, this is also a great place to find other events. Um, we will be announcing what our slate of Open Ed Week events are uh, soon, but uh, they will include our Open Education Fellows and they will include uh, H5P. So uh, hopefully that's enough of a, a teaser to say June. And now I will hand it over to Ali and um, Ali and, and Marty to see if you guys have any closing thoughts or if you'd like to answer any of these uh, questions or elaborate. We are shorter on time than I anticipated, but you know. Um, I think I put everything I have in the chat because I wanted to make sure that I had time to answer them. Um, but if folks have any questions, they're welcome to follow up uh, after the fact as well. Or if anyone wants clarification about anything that I said in the chat, <laughs> please feel free to ask. Uh, yeah, same. I, I dropped the, uh, the link to my uh, presentation in the chat and that also has the links to the, the Google Docs I was pointing to and, and our open, uh, kind of our open day planning uh, presentation as well. So, so everything, uh, there's a lot of material in there that people could, uh, could potentially use. So uh, I hope that's helpful. And yeah, I'm also happy to uh, answer questions if anybody wants to, you know, shoot me an email or, uh, you know, find me on Twitter. I'm, I'm glad to do that too. Great, and we will do our best to make everything available. We'll be making this recording available. Um, this really fantastic collaborative note-taking document that's very, very thorough. Uh, thank you to all of the anonymous uh, jackals and et cetera, alligators who are, who are doing the note-taking, uh, as well as any links that our presenters have shared. Um, finally, I just wanted to make a quick announcement that we have scheduled our next Ontario Open Library Network Community webinar. Um, I gotta share my screen again, hold on. <laughs> uh, for those of you that missed the preview of it when I accidentally flipped forward a slide, uh, this will be a surprise. If not, oops. Save the date for February 11th, uh, 2020, when we'll be talking about creating OER with students. We're lining up panelists uh, now, and I've heard your feedback and I think we will not use Zoom webinars uh, <laughs> for that one. Um, and then as, as always, thank you guys all so much for participating in not only these webinars, but also in the Ontario Open Library Network. Um, it is really a community-driven initiative. And, um, as much as we can facilitate it, uh, we, we can't do it without you. So uh, thank you for all being here, for stewarding the growth of open education uh, at your colleges and universities and for, for working uh, together. And um, oh, and Terry says a, f a few of us are thinking about doing an OE Week Wikipedia edit-a-thon. So uh, let's hopefully uh, move this, this conversation over into the OOLN Slack where I will start an Open Ed Week uh, channel for folks to ping each other about ideas and, and sort of mull over what, what they've heard today. Um, so again, thank you guys all so much. Thank you, Allie. Thank you, Marnie. Um, we really appreciate you uh, and we'll see you next month. Thanks, everyone.